Good to see so many of you back with us this morning. Mike got a little bit of a re re reverberation. It sounds to me like a little song. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three. I'm aging. Testing, that's better. Yeah. No, I sound like surrounded like that. Okay. Good to have all of you here. Uh, it's good to see some of you back that have not been with us in the past because of health conditions. And uh, so we're sort of we're sort of gaining back uh, where we lost in attendance back uh, what a month and a half ago, I guess, when all this stuff nasty stuff started. Uh, I was just telling someone, I, it's amazing to realize how COVID hit 26 of us in varying degrees, some far worse than others, and then others just moderate and, and that sort of thing, but 26 of us had. And my mother is 95 years old. She has congestive heart failure, and her heart is skipping a beat. <clears throat> She had COVID and got a tiny cough. <laughs> and she's through COVID and we were able to visit her the other day and she was just, she was better than when we saw her before. <laughs> Go figure that. I, our granddaughter said she's a tank. And I would better describe her as an animal. <laughs> Everybody knows what an animal is. She's tougher nails, but I, I, I mean, it just was me. I can't imagine. But anyway, God's in control. He has a time for all of us, and I guess uh, I, I'm not sure he's got anything much to do with her left, but uh, maybe he has something to do with me in relation to her. I don't know. I've tried to figure that out. <laughs> he's keeping her around for some reason. Uh, so anyway. <laughs> Uh, we'll, we'll find out in time with that. I want to share this in the beginning. Some of you have asked, and I postponed an answer for you for a few minutes, uh, because I knew I was going to share this with everyone. But I appreciate so much the prayers for me concerning all I shared with you a few weeks ago that I was going to have to have, I had abdominal tumors again, I was going to have to have abdominal surgery. Uh, going to have to have prostate surgery and shoulder surgery. Well, I'm still needing the prostate surgery and the shoulder surgery. But I'm not at this present time going to have to have the abdominal surgery simply because two years ago when I had the surgery and they said I had um, um, basically cancerous tumors, and then when they removed them, they were surprised when the pathology came back as benign. And uh, everybody was sort of scratching their head about that. And, and uh, so anyway, uh, when the tumors came up again, of course, they were looking at them a little harder in, in the sense of, okay, is this a repeat of last time? They look carcinoid, but what is this? So. Uh, they were found with a CAT scan that they were looking for kidney stones. So they sent me back last week, last Monday, for another CAT scan with contrast and all that stuff that they do. They got the report back from that, and I think the oncologist and, uh, was still scratching his head. So he sent the report to the pathologist at uh, Bethesda Naval Hospital in, in Maryland. and. Uh, they got a diagnosis back that was not tumors and not cancer. Uh, it is sclerosing mesentery-itis. And it's a, it's a, it's a very, and this is really amazing, it is such a rare disease that that's how they missed it. It's so rare that the oncologist called me to give me the report and 
a major concern for him was to get me to sign off on papers so that he would have my particular disease and be able to put together a paper on it to deliver to a bunch of doctors this fall. And, uh, Inflammation. No, no, that just means inflammation. But anyway, anyway, what I have is is these sclerosing things in the mesentery of the small intestine. They're not cancers. They're going to be okay to stay there as long as they do not get uh, enough of them and large enough and, and they're more coming and they are growing so they'll watch that as time goes on but that it doesn't get enough of them and, and, and large enough that it starts uh, growing into my small intestine or something that way or getting so large it cuts off the blood supply which would actually possibly kill the small intestine so they're going to watch that but right now the, the proper treatment for this is to send me to a gastroenterologist who will be the person to treat me with this. And so since I'm having abdominal pain pretty much all the time, uh, then uh, that will mean that when I see them, they will probably then start on some type of a, of a procedure to treat it. So that's the good news with that. Now the other the other thing that I appreciate you praying about is for me to have this um, uh, shoulder surgery and this uh, prostate surgery as soon as possible. You know, they quit doing elective surgeries, and hopefully that's going to start back in a couple of weeks. But uh, I have developed three new kidney stones, one in the left and two in the right, and that's why the uh, uh, the urologist is wanting so bad to do this prostate surgery is so that I'll be able to start drinking the amount of water that she wants me to drink and not live in the bathroom uh, so I can come out occasionally uh, and I started a really rigorous diet yesterday that is supposed to uh, uh, help not form new, new stones and uh, so now I can have milk, I can have cheese, and I can have bananas. <laughs> of the thing, and rice. Of the things I like to eat, that's the four things I would like to eat that I can have. Everything else, pretty much, I like to eat, I can eat. I can have vanilla ice cream. Vanilla ice cream. Not chocolate, vanilla. Yeah, I forgot to mention that. That should have been first on the list. <laughs> but anyway, pray that those things will come around soon, and particularly that my shoulder surgery can come around no later than the 1st of December. The reason for that is simply this. You know, we had to miss our plan to go try to do ministry in Arizona last spring or last winter because my back went out. And uh, <clears throat> this year we are... We're scheduled for March, and if I don't get the shoulder surgery by the 1st of December, there's no way that I have even a possible chance of being recovered enough to handle the bike and the trailer and ride the bike, and so it would just cut out the motorcycle ministry down there in March. I really, really, really feel like I need to do that, and I just wish you'd join me in prayer for that, that they'll get that surgery in so that I can make that. I just keep feeling like that that's something that we're supposed to do. And um, so anyway, uh, that's all my situation. I appreciate all of you praying for me and, um, and continue to pray for us um, in the future. And so really it's uh, all in all good news. Okay, 12 o'clock today is our leadership meeting. Now, for those of you that were here Thursday night, you know we had issues again. We thought we had it fixed one more time. Well, we're not having Thursday night service this week. We have people scheduled, IT people scheduled for sometime next week. We don't know exactly uh, when, what, what time, whatever is going on with that. They will report to us uh, earlier in the week, but we're just to be safe. We're not going to have Bible study this week. 
we have those people coming we should have everything working perfectly by next Thursday night we'll pick up again uh, and we'll start with where we stop uh, we'll just start fresh with that new tape that we just cut out on uh, Thursday night uh, but I'm so sorry about all that it's been very embarrassing it, uh, uh, people at work to try to think get it right and then think they have it right or watch videos for you know just sat here and eat popcorn and watch videos it wasn't that bad but they should have been eating popcorn and and then come thursday night as soon as we turn it on plain, 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 like strobe lights at a bar or something uh so uh these guys will get to fix it i think it's going to be 130 dollars an hour but it's going to be worth it to get it right okay so uh Keep that on your in mind on your schedule. Now, 8:30 Thursday uh, morning, November the 18th. That's the third Thursday of the month. We have our regular men's breakfast. The one change is it's no longer in Nampa. It's in Eagle at La Peeps, or La Peep is what it is, La Peep, and that is just across the street from Lowe's on Eagle and Houston. So it's going to be hard to find. Southeast corner. Yeah. If you, yes. Did I say Eagle? Yeah. I thought it was Eagle. Eagle Road. Eagle Road. Eagle Road. Is that Meridian or Eagle Road? That's Meridian. Meridian. In Meridian on Eagle Road, just across from Lowe's. That's the that's the, the 18th. And uh, 6 o'clock, get this on your calendar, 6 o'clock Saturday, December the 4th is the Thanksgiving Christmas dinner. We will have this at Cold Mountain Restaurant in Emmett. We've stopped there uh, two or three times in the past with bike rides. Food's excellent. They have a large facility <clears throat> that they will be able to handle us. And uh, it will be a buffet style, uh, and it will be a traditional Christmas Thanksgiving dinner. We'll let you know the price a little bit later. We don't have that. Belita doesn't have that honed in yet, but she will soon. And also, we have scheduled 1 o'clock Saturday, December 25th. This is the Misfit Toys Dinner at Stitch, 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 <coughs> Stitch and Bonnie's. Uh, they opened their home for us for that. And uh, so you can bring a dish of whatever you like. Uh, you don't have to, but if you want to, uh, then that's okay. Some people don't feel good about going to someone's home without taking something. So if you if you're hung up on that, bring something. If there's a cover charge or a two-drink minimum. Okay. Yeah. So either way, either way, you don't have to be you don't have to be in the situation of having no family. If you have family and want to come to this, then come on, join the party. Okay. But it was mainly designed, and, and this was a nice thing for Stitch and Bonnie to do for people who didn't have family. They opened their home on Christmas afternoon to say come and have a dinner. And that was so nice, but Stitch and Bonnie are such favorites of the congregation that uh, all these people started piling in that had family, okay? So uh, anyway, so that's uh, that's the situation. So keep that uh, uh, on, your, on your calendar also. And uh, keep Bonnie in prayer this week and Stitch also. You know, I announced it a couple of weeks ago that they had a very special need. And uh, their Stitch's cat from how many years? 16? 13 years. Uh, they had to put down a couple of weeks. Well, actually died before they put it down. I've been in the vets for a couple of weeks. This happened a couple of weeks ago. And then uh, right on the heels of that, Bonnie's not here this morning. Uh, she's home with her cat of how old? 14. 14. 14 that they carried to the vet this week. They can do nothing for her, just waiting for her to die. And so Bonnie's really down and stitched both over that. So pray for them. Those of you that have animals, you know what that, that means. I mean, <clears throat> this is not a light thing, you know? I mean, some hard hearted people who never had animals would say, it's not a person to get over it. Well, that's not the way that, that goes. You know? For some for some people, you know, some people they're the only right in <laughs> their kids that never had children or children that are gone or whatever. Uh, animals are an important part 
of many people's lives. And uh, right at the present, Belinda and I do not have any animals, but uh, man, we had animals over the hill for many years. <laughs> I mean, we had 11 horses at one time. And those horses were producing babies every year. Uh, I mean, <laughs> plus dogs and cats. <laughs> I mean, we lived in, in, out in the country in, in, in near the mountains in Colorado, and we were real ranchers and cowboys. I mean, we knew inside of us we were not real. We were from Tennessee. But the people out there didn't know the difference. I mean, we had a stud. We had mares that we bred every year. We had mares coming in from the outside that we bred. We had foals every spring. We were selling horses. Uh, you know, we looked like the real thing from the outside. I dressed like a cowboy, she did. Like a cowgirl. <laughs> Get that straight. Uh, but you understand what I'm saying? We, we really fell into that. But we know what animals mean to people. And uh, and so this is a serious thing and we need to pray for them. And, and I encourage you to remember them in prayer this week because this week will probably only bring tougher things uh, from the way it sounds. So uh, we have Sharma back with us, and I know everyone's continued to pray for Sharma, uh, but she's doing really, really well. Uh, I know she has her moments, but she's doing really well. God is, is meeting her needs and blessing her. And, and uh, we can all say uh, that have had COVID that we've really been blessed that we're here. Ed's back with us. He had to leave last week just for some food. But, but uh, Colette is still not able, I mean, Lynette is still not able to be with us. Um, but she's getting better. I mean, she has pneumonia, but she's getting better. So within the next week or two, hopefully Lynette will be back with us. And that will sort of make the circle pretty much for everybody that I can think of, uh, you know, that has gone through this trying six weeks or, or more. And uh, I'm just thankful to God for so many of you, uh, even so, though so many of us had COVID, many of you have not gotten sick. And we just praise God for that and uh, pray that that will continue to go that way, that people uh, will not get sick. Okay, that's a good thing. All right, all right, we've got Colette and part of her company here today. Ansel is uh, not feeling well this morning, and so he's not with us. But uh, we do have uh, uh, Kathy back, and uh, she's going to be able to be playing with us and singing with us this morning. We've not had her for a while, so we're happy to have her back. And Doug, Kathy got it, had to go to the hospital and was six 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 and i just thought doug was probably at home just didn't go to the hospital but really really sick and when he came back the other day he said oh i only had it for a couple of days <laughs> well good for you good for you not quite as good as me <laughs> yeah i don't know you probably did well yeah at least you're, you're not 85 that's the only difference uh, 95 you're, that's the only difference or 85 <laughs> or 85 <either. laughs> Okay, so uh, Colette, when she gets up here, is going to lead us in prayer, and then we'll get started. All right. Do we have an actual address for that Mountain Creek restaurant? Is that just uh, Mountain Creek restaurant? Uh, it's, no, it's just as you come off the hill on the left, you can't miss it going into Emmett. Uh, big old huge sign on the left. Just past the stoplight. Huh? Just past the stoplight. Yeah. The south side. GM. Yes, yes. Oh, can I say something? Yes. <clears throat> So, um, every year, we, and you ladies all know the routine, I'm sure, every year, and it doesn't have to be ladies, men can sign up too, uh, we do bags for the ladies who live at Chrysalis, and usually amounts to about 25 bags, and so I'm passing this list out for you to donate, you just sign up off of the list. Um, we limit it to this list because we want everybody to have the same thing in the bag. So we ask that you don't bring just stuff, but stick to the list. But um, it's a great time. Uh, those ladies appreciate it. They talk about it from one year to the next. Um, 
we actually go there on January the 2nd to deliver the bags, to eat dinner with the ladies, have a program of some sort, and just spend some time with them, and then we close out the evening with praying for them, and that means so much to them. So I'm going to send this around, and I'll send this around every week until it's full, and then we will, at the ladies' Christmas party, put the bags together. You know the routine. That means you want to sell up today. <laughs> you don't want to see it again. <laughs> Okay, so uh, great. God, we just thank you so much for uh, for this church. It is. We just thank you for the faces that are back with us again, and um, thank you for the sweet fellowship that we enjoy in this church. God, thank you for um, the ministries that you've allowed each one of us to be a part of as we participate in giving at this church and. Thank you for the lives that you'll touch. And thank you for the open door to go into Chrysalis this year. Mm -hmm. I just encourage anyone, if you haven't gone before, what a blessing it is to go in there and worship with those ladies and talk to them. And, uh, and, and like they've shared at, at an event, um, you can see the beginning of someone coming in and you can see the cont continents change in the ones that have been in there a while and they're open and I thank you for that that for conversation and sharing testimonies and um, what God's what you've done in our lives which is what we're called to do and it's our privilege to get to share that we were in bondage and that you set us free and I just ask that you pour out your spirit in this place today and receive this worship as a pleasing sacrifice to you. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone.